All right. We're live with another episode of Roper Story. Welcome back. And, uh, yeah, to bring us into tonight's session, we have a little recap from from Irina. Take it away. <laughs> okay, so at the minute we're plummeting to our doom, but let's have, take a moment here and figure out how we got here. So, it started off as a fairly normal morning. We were fixing the boat, getting ready to sit. Is it technically still sailing if it's in the sky? I would think so. Yeah, never mind. Uh, and we had some issues with the engine and testing it, and Carius decided that he wanted to uh, go for a fly with this weird blue misty stuff that really didn't seem to like candlelick at all. Uh, and being the little daredevil that he is, pun not intended, uh, decided to go for a bit of a flight and then uh, it nearly died, which poses a few issues. But anyway, uh, we're all alive. It's all fine. Uh, it involved firing people out of cannons and all sorts of shenanigans. Uh, then Andy decided she wanted to eat all the bread on the ship before we'd even set sail, which again posed another problem. A lot of problematic people on this boat. I don't know if we're going to survive. Uh, uh, and some one of the Borzo people decided they wanted to get into Andy's bag to try and steal something. She was not happy, let me tell you that. Uh, it then skulked off and tried to con convince Kashan to get her one, and that was all a bit of a couple. They had a bit of a disagreement. Uh, Myself and Lavellan's creepy-ass book decided we were going to follow the Borzo. Uh, Carius got caught, but caused a decent distraction so we could get down there. Some weird sort of cellar in the basement kind of deal. This guy was shifty as heck. Uh, and there was our, like a robot underneath the sheet thing. Uh, it seemed fairly harmless, but the guy, again, shifty. Uh, and we sort of yipped out of there uh, before he came back. Got on the boat, set sail, only to find the jammy jet had already broken a bit of the crystal that was the engine, and yeah, we all started to plummet to our doom. And this is where you find us. Come in screaming. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Quite right you are. The uh, ship was plummeting towards the sea. Just in time before, <clears throat> I think it was, yeah, Andy gave away her last moon rocks to Irene and you, you tried to place them into the missing sockets, but, uh... Yeah, I'm physically holding them in place right now, I think. Yeah, it seems to be a temporary fix, and right now the, the vessel has sort of leveled out, and just slowly ascending again. Uh, this is your captain speaking. Um, engine room, what the hell's going on? <laughs> uh, we're having some issues down here. If someone could come and uh, lend me a literal hand, that would be very helpful. Well, it looks like you're out, Lavellan. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a job for me. I guess. Sooner rather than later would be good. I'm I'll trying to navigate the bar. I'm trying to navigate the bar. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> There's no plots oh, on the top. I mean, I'm guessing Andy's still already down there. Yeah, yeah. Right. Down to get the uh, Alright. I mean, I have no idea what to do uh, with these things. We need something to hold this in place. Have you got, like, a rope or a... Uh, something? Uh, have rope? <laughs> Good. Loop around a few times and tie it in a knot. <laughs> Kachan, take the wheel temporarily. I uh, just have to hold down. it where it is. I'm all the way down yeah. at the bottom of the ship. How the hell? I do like to imagine mm. that Irina is yelling loud enough that you can walk in the ship. Probably, yeah. Uh, Chris, can you take me all the way up? Because so. Because oh, she asked for specifically a hand, I'm going to cast Arcane Hand to hold it in place, so she doesn't have to. <laughs> I see you struggling. Hold on. So... Yeah. 
I mean, yeah, I guess that works, but sure. Um, I'm going to, in the meantime, if, if, if you're going to hold it, I'm going to dig in my bag and I'm going to find my Tinker's tools and see what I've got in there that might help. Like some glue or... <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Uh, so you get, you've got the rope kind of holding it, but uh, of course the ship is slowly ascending and it's rumbling. You might need something to... Yeah, that's what uh, Lavellin is doing. He's using his uh, arcane hand to hold it in mm. place while I yeah. try to figure out a way to do this. Okay, yeah, so let me show you the artwork again that you've got here. Effectively, you've got a myriad of different crystals here yeah. that are all um, kind of shifting in color. There's like this chroma of uh, yeah, like reds, blues, oranges, and you can tell that one section is missing. There's probably like um, going bluish in color, and then it, it goes to a dull gray as it kind of passes over. Uh, the kind of shattered section. Um, as you try to like hold it on top of it, the, the actual kind of shape of the crystal doesn't quite fit into it. Uh, you could use your tinkerer's tools to sort of chip yeah, it. Yeah, I want to try and, and yeah, reshape <clears throat> it to try and fit it like a puzzle piece. Excellent. Okay, uh, give me a roll with your tinkerer's tools, and you'll probably add your dex to this. Uh. uh... <laughs> I'm not. Oh, I'm not okay. giving advantage. I'm not giving advantage, but I'm probably over a shoulder, just like being that ant that always gets in your business. <laughs> no, sorry, this, no, that piece there. <laughs> Darius is just sort of popped down. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> sorry, I'm just trying to figure out how to roll my tinker's tools on this. Because I don't. I don't think oh, I could. Uh, yeah. I think... No, how are you there? You can't, it's just added as an inventory item. Yeah, let's roll a d20. Yeah. And then add your decks and proficiency. I'd have a look, uh, have a look into that myself, but I can't open my sheet. Really? <laughs> yeah, I can open Hestelia, but I can't open Carrius. What the crap? Uh, so this is plus. Nothing Ooh. happens when I click Where it. Am I? What have you done? I haven't done anything. I've not been on since last session. Oh, so that's nice. 27. <clears throat> okay. You deftly chip away and you kind of match it and then you place it against the crystal. Mm, not quite there yet. Chip away again, making it fit perfectly. And as you kind of place it on, you can't even rotate the crystal, but it's that well fixed in. And. Yeah, you would almost imagine it's the same piece that's just been missing all this time. <clears throat> and uh, now that you've got this perfectly shaped piece, uh, how are you going to keep it there? Well, that's where I come in, having seen this. I'm going to walk over and be like, right. So... As you as you sort of walk in, she's probably got like that pot of crystallized honey out of her bag ready to try to stick it to <laughs> <laughs> before, but before we before it comes to that there is one potential thing i might be able to do um all right so i'm gonna just sort of shift over sort of put my hand on it and sort of run my um fingers along where i assume there's like a hairline crack almost and just try to cast mending to seal the crack using mending. divine casting because it's okay a crystal Mending does indeed begin to seal the tiny crack in the crystal. No, normally it kind of has to be used on like two halves of the same hole. But yeah. here, it seems to be working for some reason. And as, you're, as the magic is working, it you are either guessing that it's either due to and, uh, Irina's handiwork in perfectly matching it, or you're thinking that perhaps every chunk of these crystals were effectively part of one hole anyway. That is, that is, yeah, that's actually oh, yeah. a really good point. Yeah, yeah Karen uh -huh. like, looks to Irina and he's like, right, I think mostly this is going to be your handiwork. I mean, I've 
Honestly, <laughs> I can barely even see where the crack is. It's that good a job here, so well done on you. Yeah, but like, it doesn't smell as good as honey would have. <laughs> True, but if you, you want to know. do the job perfectly. <laughs> but you never know. This god might not like honey. Doesn't not really like candlewick either. But there we go. We got to share a room with it. We can smother it in honey afterwards. I mean, and besides, don't we want the honey for ourselves? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's very true. And this considering is... this crystal, no offense meant you, Crystal, you tried to kill me earlier. You don't deserve honey. <laughs> <laughs> At least not f from me. Carriers. Don't anger the gods. <laughs> it would not be the first time. Or the second time, actually. Right, so with that... They're glowing and doesn't seem to give any response to that. Right. <laughs> to be now, fair, if we're going to talk to it like it's a person, we should probably give it a name. That's true. They actually refuse to tell us the name. Hmm. Um... Moon. <laughs> I can give you a few suggestions, but I don't think anyone would dare repeat them. Luna. Luna. Yeah. The simple one. Works. Right. Oh, they should yeah, begin to lift steadily. The chips. Death star. Oh, the little chips of crystal. Oh no. So yeah, you Irina, you do how So. <laughs> right, and I'm gonna head back up to the top deck to continue piloting. Oh, phew. Probably need right, yeah. a nice little trinket, though. All those little right, shiny shards. Thanks for manning the helm, mm -hmm. Kashan. I think mm -hmm. we fixed the problem. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. Uh, Kashan, you and... see the, the ship is lifting up gradually, like, higher and higher. Higher I and think Kashan's abandoned ship. He fell overboard! Wait, <laughs> is this... Two, As I get minutes. back up there, um, do I, does it seem to be going dangerously high? Uh, it's going a little bit uncontrollably high, but not dangerously. It doesn't seem to be in your control to sort of lower at the moment, but it keeps on going, keeps climbing. <clears throat> right, using Tacla as a communication device just with Irina, it's just like, um, have you got any way to turn down the out? slightly. We seem to be going a bit higher than is probably, not dangerously so, but <laughs> you've gone too, too, low, too high now. Okay, looking uh, at the, the structure of the crystal, is it literally solid in place? Mm-hmm, yes. Mm. Can I just interpose with the ship? I've still got my arcane hand out. You want to push down on the ship with the hand? <laughs> yeah, just... <laughs> just just interpose, just keep it at the same level and interpose because it can't go past the hand. <laughs> is it a strength check, isn't it? To see it is. Yeah. It. See, see if I can outdo the thing. Okay, what's the DC? It's a uh, 26. Oh, Cause, wow. Because of the yeah. it's, it's a sort of post athletics check. I believe, yeah. Oh, it's an approach one. So I go think... ahead and. Roll that. Right. Thanks. Make a check of the hand strength contest by the athletic check of the target. Is that just a pass through this? I'm going to have to look at it and another thing because that's too much of a wall of text. <laughs> I think you're going to be fine. I just rolled a three. Oh, wow. Was that good? Yeah. Actually, yeah, the target can't move through the hand space if its strength score is less than or equal Oops. to the hand strength score, and the hand strength score is 26. Oh, so, so it actually has to roll. No, it's points. not even a roll. It's literally if its stat's not higher than your stat, then it does. I can't go through. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Well, we made it contested at the moment because it is pushing against a force. Regardless, oh. you, you, roll, you didn't roll a, d a d20, no, I just typed 20. Yeah, good job. Um, 14. Okay. So, you do start to see the ship level, and it is just pressing down with the hand, keeping it at a steady ele elevation now. It seems to be working. I can only do this for an hour. You guys are going to come up with something. 
while um, I focus on moving the hand and keeping it pushed down. <laughs> can we, like, attune to the boat? Like, attune to the crystal? I'm gonna sit down and try. That's, to be honest, that's actually a pretty good idea. Um, so if I'm gonna really... be the engineer, then... Yeah. Mm. Unless it, it would be make more sense for the captain to do it if they're at the helm. Possibly. They need to but... control the ship more. There is a crystal at the helm as well. Yeah, so... How many so crystals they... are on the boat? There is one in the engine room, one at the rear, one on the front that's kind of being, I guess, held in Patience's hands. Um, strawberry. Yeah, and then there's one in the actual helm itself. So there's four. As, as the colours cycle and it goes to red, we're like, oh, it's a strawberry now. Oh, it's changed. Yeah, <laughs> that close, as soon as it sees it's a strawberry, it's just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, so... Uh, this is kind of a weird one because um, this is Taclo talking, but with um, Karis' voice, because I can talk through Taclo just to Irina. Um, so the idea of tuning makes sense, but I'm not sure whether technically, because this is all part of one entity, technically, if one person needs to attune to it, or if we need multiple people to attune to the different areas. I mean, if I could try attuning to the engine, and then if that doesn't work, then we could try separately. It wouldn't hurt. Yeah, I mean, that's not a bad shout. Aren't you technically attuned to a piece of it? Because you're attuned to the pearl. That's true. You've actually kind of got that link already. You do. Very, Irene. very good point. I'd like Irina to roll an arcana check as well, just based on her knowledge of attunement items. Does my law come into effect here, or is that specific if I'm looking something up? Uh, which which law? Uh, what's it called? The um. Salt's law. Yes, Salt's <laughs> law. Uh, legend law. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, no, this isn't necessarily just, something. Just a straight arcana. Yeah? yeah, this is just general knowledge yeah. of attunement items. Okay. Nineteen. That's not bad. So. There is a potential, like, it, literally just as Lavella mentioned it, that idea is kind of confirmed in your head. There, These are somewhat magical items, and you've already attuned to this strange pearl of power within your possession. It seems to be made of the same substance. You could use that as a focus and try to reach out to this same crystal. And you've so already what you're seeing is like a technically use it like a car key. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Also, Sorry. there's a mention of um, <laughs> the fact that this was somehow sentient, or at least in Karis's mind, it seemed to have a will of its own. Mm. And you are very familiar with sentient items, having one in your possession already. Mm. So perhaps you are possibly the best person for this. And as you're sort of sitting down, perhaps on the bed next to it, trying to reach out to it, it feels sort of shut off. It feels like it's maintaining a job right now, and you can't necessarily feel it's wanting to attune. Might be because something else is in your possession. Okay, um, um, I was literally going to say, okay, I'm going to take a Candlewick scabbard, yeah. Um, and I'm gonna hand him to Andy. The scabbard is empty at the moment, but I'm gonna hand it to you. She holds it at arm's length. And I'm just gonna be like, <laughs> can you just take it outside? Like, one minute. She takes it out at arm's length, but I really shouldn't be touching this, I don't think. It's fine, he can't hurt you. He's, he's in the scabbard. Just don't, don't drop it. it. Rebellious airship. Um, or you do notice as like you walk further and further towards the door, Irina seems to sort of lose all the colour like from her body. She just goes very pale. She becomes a giraffe! <laughs> Not quite that bad. Um, and she's just gonna sort of sit cross-legged on the floor the hmm. nearest to the crystal as she can get. Okay. Yeah, you surround yourself in this kind of bluish haze and begin trying to reach out to it. 
and this is going to take a little bit of a yeah i'm prepared to take some time okay cool um so whilst Irina is meditating within the engine room trying to attune uh what would everyone else like to be doing well i'm on sword guard duty you can still go about your business just you can, yeah. gathered. i, I mean really you can cut... an actual role i is the crew's so. i mean you kind of are um look out you've done look out duty yeah i guess or manning the sails in case we need to do the fast turn because you made the sails, so you probably know more about them than most of us. Anything that keeps you out of the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I've already locked the door. I'm not here. <laughs> you this locked is your it. conscience. I don't right. have a conscience. Wait. All right, it's kind of weird. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> right. Um, so Carius is probably going to be just trying to understand the ship's controls, maybe just trying to turn it to like the left and right, just seeing how it responds now that it's actually in the air. Um, <laughs> and then considers for a moment and is just like, wait, we do have the option to divert power from the engines. But diverting it to the weapons at the moment seems stupid. <laughs> diverting it to the shields seems stupid. Um, diverting it to the pushy things would look stupid. I mean the thrusters. The no, the, the things that um, the rams Kushan developed, which would like to like push a ship away, sort of thing. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the only one I can think of is the fast turn sort of thing, because that would also use the ship, the engines, like the fuel, I suppose. Right. Like the fast turn ability, right? That was one of the things we got. Like, oh, you do, quickly. yeah. Um, so, would that... Actually, considering what Irina's trying to do, Karis is considering this, but then after Irina starts, she's like, right, probably a good idea to just maintain the ship, try not to use too much so that it can sort of focus on her and she can focus on it. Um, hey, Kishan, did you know... Um, those are... Uh, those older... Um, one sort of the board so and sigil leaf, um, Ram de Gas, and can't remember the elf's one. Ram de Gas is the old it's board, it's a drill or something like that. It's a drill, yeah, yeah. Elven, they're actually Elven. quite nice. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a drill that they let me borrow a book from the library. I was quite surprised, but oh, I hope yeah. you're planning on returning that. Oh yeah, definitely. In fact, I'm hoping that uh, potentially I might be able to take more books with me to donate, potentially. It's like a thank you. But I thought um, once Irene is not busy and can actually help me understand the language, um, trying to learn more about dragons, considering what we're going up against, might be a good idea. You know. No, it would definitely make sense if, well, yeah. if this is what we're destined to go up against. But if you oh. if you need any help at all, uh, feel free to ask. Of course, I mean I'm more than oh, happy. Oh yeah, you literally speak everything. Well, yeah. but <laughs> technically, like, with the tongue of the sun and moon, just as a thing, can he read everything, or is it only that he can? No, speak? I can only speak it. Because it's not so much that you really speak that language; it's more just you under it's almost like synchronizing with their key or something so you understand them via that sort of monkeyness Monk, I, suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I think i think that's how it's meant to work because it's like it's not just like haha i can suddenly speak everything it's more you have that sort of understanding i think yeah. i could be wrong i mean but yeah um yeah because I mean, whilst, as you can probably tell, um, I'm sort of the type who enjoys a good fight, I really want to try to deal with this diplomatically and not potentially risk the lives of the entire Claude Coast. Well, yes, I mean, going up against a dragon isn't exactly what I was counting as a holiday. No. But, um... 
but then again facing a dragon even just talking to it is going to be <laughs> yeah it's not going to be the easiest thing in the world but it, it... <sighs> I mean if they're anything like Zaf that shouldn't be too bad well I mean but... did we even know where Zaf came into this whole thing well, he was, I think, part of that sort of group and decided rather than trying to join in with the whole let's conquer the entire Claude Coast to expand our territory, I'm going to go find somewhere else where we can expand our territory where we don't have to kill lots of people. But I think he sort of, a diamond in the rough, sort of, like, compared to the rest, like, yeah. At least from what I understand. I mean, I could be wrong, but... Well, I mean, you you never know. He actually might be... I don't know, related. I don't know how dragons work, but we might already have a, a foothold within this. Yeah. Well, if it's a group of dragons or whatever. Yeah, I mean... I honestly, up until we met Zap, I thought most dragons were like solitary creatures, but finding the fact that some even move around almost in like seemingly like uh -huh. tribes or packs yeah. is, or herds, and I think the technical term, which I quite like, is a storm of dragons, but. Nice. Um, <laughs> Carius would know that. He might not know anything else about dragons, but he would know the technical yeah. term. <laughs> Yeah, I think you would. I think the storm is correct. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I, I, mean... I can never escape books as characters, like. But yeah. Seriously, I mean, we'll be really behind nice. you one hundred percent. So. Yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, for me, I'm most, <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> if I'm. Being completely truthful, it's not even the dragons I'm most worried about. Oh. Yeah. Well, the obvious person to go speak to about this, considering it's all like they're going to attack on the perfect storm, is to go speak to the person who I know know more about storms than most, which would be my dad. Our last conversation did not end well. <laughs> A bit of a family feud, or...? Well, it's more... You see, you kind of got to understand a bit about my family. So, uh, most of the males in my family, of which are actually slightly rarer, are kind of like weather work, because we manipulate the weather, we help the crops grow. Not sure why we're particularly good at it, it's just something that we've always been good at. And the women tend to be the diplomatic sort of type it's just sort of um but i was never quite as serious about it as my father wanted and probably nowhere near as dedicated as my younger brother who was always seen as sort of the perfect child and i see after i got struck by lightning by <laughs> one of the gods well by my <laughs> god um as you do and that was found out by my dad. We got into a bit of an argument, which is what got me sent off to shack up with Castellius and train under them to try to become more disciplined and stuff, because there's sort of like a relationship there, like um, they grow the crops for his islands and help with that. And, but it was just, yeah, so. I'm looking forward to seeing most of my family. I'm even looking forward to seeing my dad. I'm just not sure he'll be happy to see me. And the last time we spoke, it almost ended in a fight that, honestly, if anything came close to a perfect storm, it was probably that argument. Well, I can <laughs> guarantee you with... You have us now. So that we want to get down to that kind of situation. Yeah. And I'm sure, well, on this journey at least, I've seen a lot of change in all of us already, including myself. So perhaps he's changed in his journey as well. He might be completely different when you last saw him. 
Yeah, it's been a few years. Foreshadowing. It has been. What? Yeah. Who said that? <laughs> um, Must have been Andy's but, conscience speaking out there. <laughs> but yeah, ah. it's just. <laughs> yeah. But I'm looking forward to seeing my brothers and sisters, all eight of them. Exactly. Keep <laughs> positive. <laughs> <laughs> that's right you have to play eight npcs at once i mean there's a good chance they won't all be there they'll be off doing like diplomatic and marketing stuff but... who all have a mixture of sentient weapons and items yeah. all have and their all own the personalities up, yeah. no <laughs> one has a oh, grimoire yeah. of their own start with care uh, they they don't all start with K. Whoever they says that, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> I've named my siblings. They're on my bio in World Twenty. There you go. Major Joe Beasley. On... <laughs> <laughs> yep. I didn't think we'd ever go back there, so I'm just like, you know, I'm just gonna. <laughs> I'll make it fun, <laughs> just so sort of I could run around this and then. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Fun. So. It's going to be interesting. I mean, I've at least learnt a few things, and I think I'm close, probably both closer and further away to what my dad want, would want for me in terms of who I should be. Well, I'm sure he's going to be proud of you no matter how you end up. Or at least he should. Yeah. So I am curious as to how he's going to feel about the flying ship that runs on the corpse of a god. Might I might um, I might skip that bit. <laughs> Perhaps I mean maybe not go into details about how we got the ship. Yeah. No. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could just say you made it. That if I managed to now I suppose, but then it was not. I mean, technically I helped make it. So I suppose that's not completely a lie. I mean, I wonder, I wonder how they're going to react to Irina. Because they've met Irina before, some of them at least. I think. Scale of 1 to 10, how mad is your dad at me still? <laughs> it's been like 10 <laughs> years. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a good question. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to, I might just have to gauge before we let you interact. I think you may have almost. Did you almost burn down one of his boats? I'm, I'm, I'm not here, it's just a second. Yeah, <laughs> Karen is just considering... So I call it to Taclo. <laughs> yeah. Passing it on to Taclo. Yeah. Yeah, but... Yeah. Okay. So... I can't even remember whose fault that was. Was that your fault or my fault? Honestly, I'm really not sure. <laughs> I don't remember anymore. How... Anyway, how goes your attunement? <laughs> okay, so... Is taking a lot longer than what you expected. In fact, you reckon it might take the better part of all day. It's not normal attunement. You're feeling like yeah, no, no, that's fine. I honestly don't expect it to happen immediately. I've yeah. got practice in this. Exactly. Yeah. It took <laughs> I'm a while. I made myself comfortable. <laughs> um, given that how many like there are, in compared to like this model crystal you have. You reckon it is possible to sort of attune to all of them collectively, but it's going to take, what, an hour for each crystal, effectively, to sort of map out where they are in your mind. And... That's fine. I will spend the entire day down here if I have to. All right. You heard it. Does the ship keep itself level while she is mid-attunement? Um, well... Once because my hand only lasts an hour. It does only last an hour. <laughs> okay. So, after a while, Levan, the the ship is still slightly elevating, less so than it was before. It's only very gradual. But it's not like it's going to go into dangerous territory anytime soon. You reckon over the course of travel, there will be needing some moments where you'll have to try and ease it up but um you can roll me an intelligence check real qu or, real quick Levan. straight intelligence yeah 
Fifteen. So, you're looking over the side of the boat and inspecting these clouds because, of course, they're the ones that are being enchanted, and you do have quite a number of clouds being kind of supported underneath the the ship here. Um, you reckon if there was w one way to get rid of the lift, is to get rid of some of the cloud cover. Oh. That is what is generating the lift, the enchanted clouds. How long does elementals last? An hour. Ah, uh, so it's the same sort of thing. Yeah. I could do that once it gets to... Okay. ...higher terrain. Well, if you got Am rid I of the clouds, they're not going to suddenly regrow, are they? <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, yeah, then I'll do that. I thought the crystal <laughs> generates the clouds. It's only because you're pressing down, no. it's, the, the lift is still the same. But if you got rid of some of the lift, then... Yeah, because the crystal um, sort of melds with the clouds and enchants them to give the lift. Mm -hmm. Ah, so it's not, it doesn't create them, it, it just collects them. It creates a haze, and that haze melds with the cloud, like James was okay. saying. Yeah, I'll, I'll create a air elemental then. Okay. All right. And get um, there. So. You could probably do that with lesser elementals, couldn't you? Or do you I don't have... have that. I never bothered, you... because why? Is it the, um, can I just ask, is this the air elemental from, from the hut? I don't like the way he's smiling. Be careful. <laughs> no, I'm gonna I'm gonna use the one that that uh, El Ravan. Oh, El Ravan one. Yeah, Valais, I think it's called. Uh, possibly. <laughs> uh, is this normal air elemental or the bigger one? The bigger one. So the. So the invisible stalker. Well, oh no, no, no! I'm not casting it at a higher level. It's, uh, okay, I'm just having a look. It, it'll be the same to... one, just not invisible. Uh, I've not given it the ability to be invisible. It was Volance. Volance. Yeah, Vividus is the vine elemental. Yeah, hmm. Volance, yeah. Wait, why I have no idea why I can't open your character sheet. Why am I in here twice? Because I'm trying to fix your character sheet. Ah, fair enough. Right, you know, thinking about um, Lars the Velens pushing down the ship and working this out with his elementals, not that I know that technically, um, you know, with how this ship works, Gashan, it, like, um, enchants the clouds with the blue haze. What happens if it's not cloudy? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can probably create clouds, but I'll never be able to create a question enough. to me? Yeah, I'm just sort of curious as to what loud. Gashan's opinion. What In fact, <laughs> you probably get that look. He's just kind of like, like hair blowing in the breeze, and then he just kind of stops, and just slowly turns. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> well, well, like, so this is kind of running on clouds, basically. It uses the clouds almost like a boat uses water, but in order to use the clouds, it, like, enchants them with the haze from the crystal. So if there's no cloud, there's nothing for it to go on. <laughs> I don't like where it... this is going, Terius. <laughs> no, neither do I. I'm, I'm annoyed. <laughs> I'm possibly putting ideas into a mean god's head, but who knows? <laughs> um, I've, uh, I've had to come to the back of the ship because obviously that's where the cloud is hazed. 
Mm-hmm. Well, I'm assuming so, when the, it just infinitely generates this cloud from whatever the crystal is. So as long as we get we keep that crystal going, then we well, stay afloat. Hmm. It Speaking doesn't generate. Which, I wonder how it this does. Is going. <laughs> it doesn't actually generate the cloud. It generates the haze which goes into the cloud. This is slightly okay. different. Though, considering the fact that I got lifted up so high by the haze, it's possible that it may have enough buoyancy even without the clouds to just lower us down gently. Maybe. If not... I may have to be trying to carry a boat. <laughs> Not sure how that's going to work. <laughs> yeah, be um, interesting. But, and I can, I can probably create like I can use like fo a spell I've got called Fog Cloud to create like little pockets or cloud to like slowly hmm. lower us down. Yeah, possibly. I mean, that's still. Work. Yeah. All right. Um, so for the most part, this day is going without a hitch. You don't seem to encounter anything in the skies, and the villain, you finally bring forth your wind elemental, right? Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> what do you, uh, will it to do? I will it to basically swoop through parts of the cloud to, like, separate it from the rest. So as we go forward, there's bits of cloud that gets pushed out. Which I assume, with it being mixed with the purple haze, parts of it will just end up going off and then floating upwards. Yeah, so the air elemental looks like it is having the time of its life as it kind of whirls around in the air. It's this surfing. Is possibly the highest it's ever been. But it's whooshing through the clouds and... As the air elemental comes out the other side, you see that there is this kind of bluish tint to the actual air, air elemental itself. And it kind of looks at its own body, and uh, it seems to be lifting up as well. As it tries to swoop back down, it's like pushing against the actual oh, cloud itself. You oh, no. <laughs> okay over there? I sit, call out to an Auron. Oh, no. This is the strangest thing. I, I feel lighter. <laughs> what? Wow. What is this magic? Is it like um, to air our elementals? <laughs> um, celestial <coughs> presence. See. I think. It feels Divine like I'm being. Presence. Feels like I'm being raptured. Um, out of curiosity, do you need to breathe? Is you dumb? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I am air. So, if you were to go up high enough where there was no longer any air, would that be a problem for you? According to my character sheet, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I think um, I'm not sure about that. It doesn't actually work. <laughs> I mean, what are you? <laughs> it's probably something they not they didn't even consider. No. Well, I mean, <laughs> if it's there's like... no air up there in general, then I guess you can't send a creature made of air to a place where there is no air. That makes sense. Well spotted there. All right. <laughs> so you see, the air elemental is like, uh, feels like I'm wrestling slightly. What would you have me do again? Uh, can you blow air? I can. It's... Maybe you want to do that instead of going through it. It might be better. I need to be within it. Oh, maybe can you? Yeah, can you do that and just blow it away? In one last well, fell swoop, I'll do what I can. And Just you make see... sure you leave some under the boat. All right. Yep. How much are we talking? Um. 
to be fair, if it stays on the of air, if it stays ah. under the boat, it should only then be stuck under the boat until. Right. So, just this is actually so. Currently, the cloud it is the buoyancy or like the lift caused by the boat determined by the amount of cloud beneath the boat. Like, if it's like 10 foot of cloud, is that more lift than 5 foot of cloud? Right, yeah. The more cloud there is, the okay. more lift. So, if you and um, Mr. Air Elemental, how much cloud is there beneath the boat at the moment? Seems to be one atmosphere. Um, could you reduce that to say not point eight uh yes okay <laughs> uh, just guessing a number <laughs> he is literally just guessing um all right that means i'll have to take 200 barometers uh it begins to float down and everyone underneath the ship well everyone on the ship can feel the jostling of the actual air, uh, or jostling of the actual deck, rather, as the air is lifted out, and you see the element, air elemental, in order to get the air to come out with it, has formed into a sort of mini cyclone, and as it spirals upwards, it takes a trail of it with it. Oh yeah, it has whirlwinds. <laughs> Read the term. I don't I, I have a character sheet. <laughs> Uh, as it does, yeah, you see this trail has definitely pulled out with it, and it feels like the air is, it, the ship is still just lifting. You can see that the the gnomes have actually equipped a sort of gauge on how much elevation there is, so the little needle is still just over the level mark. Is there not a control to turn that down? I'm sure, I'm sure they did make a control to turn that down. Did they now? Regardless, the air elemental goes in again after um, it's still not enough and does a second whirlwind. It recharges. <laughs> oh, it does, which is oh, just... Does. That's really lucky because it's, the next time the air elemental brings out a bigger portion and whirlwinds up towards the air, the air elemental tries to go back down. And as it tries to descend... He can't. I think... I have done all I can! It's okay, you just have fun with the time you've got left. I must go now. The heavens I'm call to me! Farewell, <laughs> world. <laughs> well, sky. I just... And you just see the air elemental get pulled away into the vanishing point. I just along with the spiraling blue haze it kind of took with it. I just turned to Carius and I'm like, you know, it's really weird when you control my spells like that. Air elementals are very. Well, I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't controlling your spell. I was just talking to it. They're very dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, nonetheless, yeah, it does seem like the needle has kind of leveled out and you're now at a steady pace. Just gonna wait um, for Irina to do her okay. entry. Um, well, it gets to a pretty late hour in the day. The sun has set on the horizon and night is creeping in. Everyone aboard the deck is mostly getting tired, except. Irina, you are trying to stay awake, concentrating on these crystals. And now mm -hmm. the glow is even more present, now that it's kind of gone to night. it's You can almost feel the glow as much as you can see it. But yeah. everyone else, you're probably heading to bed, unless you want to keep a watch. 
Um, I'll jump up into the crow's nest. I'll head up there as well. Uh, I gotta do a. Too crowded for three. Oh my god, there's three. <laughs> and he's been up there this whole time. <laughs> so I'll climb up there and go. Oh, I didn't realize it was like occupied. <laughs> Stargazing, you start jumping in on top of her. Uh, it'll probably still climb up top, but we'll just go and like perch on one of the like the sail yeah. rails. Carius is just sort of looking at the controls to see if there's an autopilot function. I was. <laughs> I don't think there is. <laughs> I uh. I'll stay with Carius then. There is a uh, there is a locking mechanism. In fact. You know, something you've noticed as you're operating the, the ship throughout the day is that the ship kind of moves and glides effortlessly. Unlike a ship where you really do have to wrestle against the waves and the wind, for the most part, you are still utilizing the wind, but there isn't as much friction on the underside of the ship, and so nothing really kind of like knocks it a, astray. And you've been keeping on a, on a direct path to the west for a long time now it doesn't feel like you've actually had to adjust or accommodate for that so uh i wanted to give i wanted to give you this and i and i chuck this rod with a cog on the end to carry us um, it seems like you might need it more than anyone after yesterday's fiasco um is it a rod of stop flying out into space <laughs> essentially yes uh just just turn up just hold on to it and turn that cog though i do so and he is thrown from the wheel because he is is attached to this rod oh god <laughs> uh, yeah you start to see the ship is sliding forwards without you, Carius, and your feet are kind of like scraping across the ground as you try to find traction. You're still holding onto the rod, but the ship is going off without you. I turn it back the other way. You're just in time as your back nearly hits the edge of the balcony. Wow. That should do the trick next time, right? I mean... It depends how it handles against gods, but yeah, I suppose. But, yeah, and also other things in general. If you yeah. fall off your glaive, or... And, uh, funnily enough, they utilize something exactly the same, but with the cruise control, so that the sails stay in place. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> right, so... Huh. So this yes. will completely stay in space. Interesting. All right. So I probably should get some sleep because it's probably in the day that we're going to need the most. Are you okay to man the wheel for a couple of hours? Sure. I'll probably call a few other people up to like hand out other things. But yeah. Yeah. It doesn't really... Um need much compared to a normal boat at the moment. Maybe if we get to combat or something, then maybe, but for now Karis is just going to head actually, to be honest, Karis is probably just going to find a position on the deck and lay down. <laughs> He's used to laying on the deck. Sure. Okay. Um... Try doing that with an Australian accent. What? Our... Oh, <laughs> I got it. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll be doing, I'll be doing my message spell and I'll call Andy next, I guess. Okay. Like, Andy, I've got a gift for you. You do? I do. Uh, do you want to? Come to the wheel. I'm kind of having to handle it. Carius has gone to bed. Okay, I'll be right down. So she has to scramble out of the crow's nest and come down. (laughs) 
Ay, uh... Ay, though. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. She's come down because you've asked her to. <laughs> Shambles down. Like, so I came across some items on the island and I've not been able to give them out, so I'm having to do it manually one by one right now. But, uh, these were meant for a crossbow, but I fashioned them into arrows for you. And I handed the plus two walloping arrows. Ooh, sweet. So that is right, you... Brad. You say sweet when something is good? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so if you uh, shoot this at people, you're more likely to hit them and possibly knock them down. She looks at him suspiciously and says, Do you think I have bad aim? <laughs> what are you implying? <laughs> no, they're just weighted for accuracy. Okay. And you can knock people over with them. Thank you. Yeah. And me. Should be. Uh. Next. Next. How, how many are there? There's one, two more. But I don't know who to give the clockwork amulet to. I think she was asking how many arrows. How many were arrows? There. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, six. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll add them on the sheet when I can get up. <laughs> hmm. yeah. All right, cool, cool, cool. Uh, so, and I'll I'll hand the clockwork amulet to Andy to pass yeah. to Irina because she's busy. I don't right. like the way it should go, but it's either her or, or Kashan. It basically allows you to have. A automatic 10 on the dice plus mm -hmm. your bonuses but only once per day so if you if Kashan needs it for the sunny, sunny strike that's possible or if Irina needs it to get that third shot off to make things go kaboom it's well, it wouldn't be automatic stunning strike because it's me rolling the dice well yeah my gut says still give it to Kashan though Wait, it's if he needs a hit off to try and get the stunning strike but you can give it to Irina, and if Irina feels it's better in Kajan's hands, then... Sure. Okay. Sure, that one right, so... down to Irina to give it to her. Yeah, uh, what Lavellan hands you is a little clockwork um, stopwatch, and it's shaped in the shape of a sun, with the rays of the sun shaped to look like leaves. So it's almost this complete kind of collaboration between the Sigil Leaf and the Borzo tribe in that it's a mechanical leafy sun made of moonstone. It's like, it's the combination of all the elements and, and symbology. And I can actually show you a picture as well, because yeah. where is it? Jamie, you've got it. I have. Um, what do I need to click to bring up the picture? Oh, I found it. It's all good. Okay. There we go. Pretty. Did everyone see that? Yeah. My lids off. Back is. Everything is clicking and cracking. Just like the clock. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Cool. All right, so you head back down to where Irina is. Oh, I mean, well. does it look like that she's particularly busy right now because of her attuning? She is. Okay, she'll just kind of like flip it in Irina's bag. <laughs> a very, very, very badly written note where she's tried to put from Lavellan on it, but probably spelt it from Lemon. Oh, but to be fair, she thinks the melon is spelt loser. Yeah, that's, that's true. Right. Right. Yeah. That's right, yeah. <laughs> From loser. Oh, uh, yeah. Anyway. How do you spell the melon? L O S E R. Sorry, <laughs> mm. <sighs> that's what she's been doing. Great. Uh, uh, Alright, so I'm going to drag and drop it into Irina's inventory and see what happens. 
Equipment. Did that work? I'm just checking it out. Yeah, there it is. It's at the top of your loot. <laughs> oh, indeed. Uh, there you go. Cool. Cool. All right. So, um, speaking of Irina, okay. At this point, everyone else, are you heading? To... Oh wait, Levelin, you got one more thing. Well, Kashan, but then there's a whole like role play conversation right there. So if you want to move on to Irina. No, because you need to be in bed. I'm like, I can oh. wait. <laughs> okay. I call Kashan to the stand. <laughs> to the stand. I mean, I guess you could have got Andy to basically swap with him. Yeah, do that. Uh, Kashan will yeet off and then slow fall down. And miss oh, the boat. Okay. Yeah, misses the boat. <laughs> Robbie and acrobatics check. Uh, yeah. Do I have? Because the boat is still moving. Oh yeah. No. Wow. Uh, do you say acrobatics? Yeah. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> oh, oh, that was Entry. almost enough. Yeah, yeah, you're good. You managed to kind of like swing bar, like monkey bar, off the sails, and then, yeah, kind of like walk, like run alongside the ship. And then get to the back and jump through the porthole. And you're into. Well, sorry, wherever you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> you rang? So, I've been giving gifts to people, stuff that I've had on me. And I uh, I have an item for you that you might be interested in. Hang on. So it might not be. The last person who did this was Patience, and that was just before she left us. No, no, I'm not leaving. I just want to make sure everyone gets that. Have you packed fair... your bags? No. <laughs> Jeez. No, but I hold out this small little like piece of wood. Uh, probably has like a metal ring on the inside, on on the middle, and I just. Uh, Thank you. I just go to hand it to him, and as he goes to take it, zip it. And it'll just extend. His oh brain. yeah, zippity yip! Immediately extends the small wooden rod out to the length of oh, a full quarter star. star. Yes. Dexterity save because it might hit you in the gut. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sure. In fact, hold on. Does it? Does it start extending towards me? Yeah. That's what I mean. Deflect missiles. Deflect. Head off the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just like, whoa! It's like, no, but that was the present! No. <laughs> Alright, what's sure. true? You kind of immediately, with your nimble reflexes, grab a hold of the end of the star before it smacks into your, your face or groin or wherever it was aimed. Uh, I would have but... given me a bit of warning about that. <laughs> I... I thought that was the fun in how we work. Where did you get it? On the island. The uh, the bars, you know that chest, the bars or tripod. Well, Wait. they were quite generous in sharing when me and Carius got the. Inside Once we taught them check. how. <laughs> Once we taught them how they work. Mm, yes, I mean, I'm sure they does. were completely willing to give you their precious twenty-three. It does feel like he is telling the truth, and you remember leveling almost every moment he got a chance to picking up bits of rusties and pocketing them and he did have the tech magic up like half the time so yeah he's been collecting things thus this whole time like a toolbox uh, of magical a chipmunk or a magpie <laughs> i don't know whatever <laughs> yeah like a magpie more like as much as i uh, i appreciate the gift i really hope that you got permission to take these oh of course i taught them how to use some of theirs that they didn't realize could do stuff. Well, then I appreciate that, Lavellan. Also, I wanted to speak about what you mentioned in your scroll. Now that you finally opened up about them. Of course. I'd uh, be more than happy to share. The next area you mentioned, I think I know of it. 
this uh cave oh uh let me just go and get out so i can get the wording unless this is one that i didn't get wording for um he he has yeah sorry you have mentioned we have mentioned this one before yeah, yeah. he's it talking about crystalline the crystal the scroll of diamond soul yeah yeah you, you mentioned it in the library is. yeah i was following some leads back way back in the past not counting the fact that we had 10 years in the fair wild Yes. But yeah, it was. I was visiting Finkelbib, Gnome Village, and a dwarf decided to come reside there because he couldn't go home because he was blamed for the death of his mining crew. Right. But he swears they went missing in a cave that was there one day and gone the next. And where exactly is this cave? Because as far as I'm aware, it's appeared in multiple different locations. Yeah, from where I was shown, it was on the uh, mountains above the Shiver Pine Forest. You know, where we passed near Palfor. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, it. He swears it was exactly where he showed me, but it wasn't there. But if I'm a hundred percent honest with you, I. I have a feeling this isn't going to be something that we're just going to be able to chase. Yeah. This is something that's going to find us. If this is my destiny, that I am to follow this path. And the path is not one that wants to be found. Then I need to wait for it to find me. Or to find yeah. us. Yeah. But but here's the thing. And, and Lavellin goes into like crazy conspiracy mode. <laughs> As I, like, like, you, like, like you see from uh, Always Sunny. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> but. I was in that room that you were in. You know, with all the, the like glyphs on the wall of all the different planes. Yes, I remember. And I was able to somewhat study it while I was there. And I noticed what some of the demi planes were. And one of them is a plane of minerals. What if the cave isn't a cave entrance? Maybe it just looks like one. What if it's a portal? A portal to a different plane altogether. Of minerals so therefore it just it looks like a cave but it's it's just you know well that would definitely make sense as to why people were able to go in and then not come out again or disappear altogether but but the question is what is causing this to open in different places and specifically this one this is something that I'm not very much going to be able to help with as I don't have the scroll. So, um, we it's something to check out in the future. Maybe we speak definitely. to the that I'm, same dwarf or go to where he was from. Maybe they've heard rumors of it appearing on that mountain range multiple we times. Need to find those thieves that stole we our do. possessions. Well, we got most of our possessions. Just yes, your Mars. scrolls. Yes. <laughs> but yeah. But Have you got the rest of them? Or is it just that uh, one? The only one that, that I found? have is two of them. Ah. I have my unified dream and uh, <laughs> scroll of the tongue and moon. Scroll of the tongue and moon? Scroll of <laughs> the... Oh, you get what I mean. I have two scrolls out of six. A second command word? Is it like the opposite? Is it like yippity zip? Papa da gata. I'm just waiting for 
Chris type in. And yeah. lastly, uh, and I, I, I pull out the book. Oh my god, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. I pull out I pull out my book again, but I keep the it all covered apart from this fine. I'm I'm getting to show the um, um but yeah, I point out the runes again. You know oh, these are they connected. the same runes that were in the room. No, no. Okay. I don't believe. But as I last mentioned, these runes are connected to Ludovu. And with the way things have been going recently, the tougher things we've been coming across, I think you should copy them down just in case something does happen to me. Because what if these well what if these are inside your scrolls? At some point, what if they're important further down the line? He'll nod and will probably ask for a bit of parchment because I doubt it's something that he'd carry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and we'll take note. There was actually something that you mentioned to me uh, quite, a, <laughs> quite a long time ago now, thinking back on it. Um, it was actually the first time you ever asked to see my scrolls. When yeah. I mentioned the name Ladovu, you said that you had heard that name before? Yeah. The... I came across a person who was being used like a battery, but he was dead. Which is kind of where I got the runes from. It wasn't my fault. Battery. Yeah. It, from what I gather, what these runes... He was able to power things. Oh, this isn't going to be easy. You know, like how this, <laughs> how this airship is later. powered. <laughs> you know how this airship is powered. Uh huh. By the crystal. Imagine that, but a person instead of a deity. Right. That's as close as we're going to get. As I see his eyes glaze over. <laughs> Just like... But yeah. Do I take he... the psychic damage now? <laughs> <laughs> From what I could tell when I spoke to him... You know how I can speak to dead sometimes. I thought he... it was just a hobby, but yes. He was like an acolyte of Ladovu, or a follower, I guess, like you. And he had these runes on his arms, and he said he was able to harness the power of Ladovu through these runes. But the evil guy who captured him was then using that to use his body as a battery. So it was somebody trying to take the power of the Dovu, trying to harness what he had Pretty created. Much. So whether that's actually on whether Ladovu is a being of power, or whether he was harnessing the same power that Ladovu does in the first place, I don't know. Did you ever... Maybe that's what you're aiming towards. Did you find out your... who, what what they wanted with them? Or, or what their plan was? What even that power was? Well, sadly, I was only able to ask it three questions and we were kind of in a really terrible place so we didn't get to stick around. Did you ask for a name? No, that was not one of the questions, sadly. <clears throat>
Well, I guess I am. I'm. But who well. knows? Maybe, maybe these runes have come to good use. Maybe harnessing the same power that Lodoru did is what I'm... you are aiming to with this pilgrimage. I appreciate that. Uh, however, the the last thing that I want to come out of my pilgrimage, bearing in mind this was really meant to be for a selfish reason, but if what comes out of it is power, the power that evil can take over. Hmm. I don't know, this has given me a lot to think about, Lavellan. Uh, once again, I appreciate for sharing, however, I, yeah, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> you just, you got to remember that evil can harness anything, even other people. You just, it's people like us that fight against that, so don't read too much into that. Yes, <laughs> got to keep optimistic, of course. Yeah, I mean, like when we met, we were in forests walking about and look at us now on a goddamn airship. Yes, I'm not going to lie, this wasn't exactly where I was expecting to find myself, uh, even after my past. Um, <laughs> but yes, I definitely uh, an amazing turn of events for all of us. Yeah. Well, anyway, I hope that item comes to good use and the runes and whatever information I was able to gather from your scrolls. I appreciate it. Sleep and well. if you ever want to talk about... In fact, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> like, just looks at you with a weird sort of... Head to he kind of looks at you, looks at the book. Good night, <laughs> Lefele. <laughs> uh, okay. But thank you. Talk to us. So with everyone having mostly gone to bed now, uh, also, did you say the last command word as you walked away? Hmm? Sure. Oh, could I, could I, I have the, the sheet for that? I, uh, no. I, I, <laughs> why did you have to have it as that? Because it's that. Zippity it to electric boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> why? As, he, as soon as you say that, uh, Kishan, you see the staff on your hand that is about the size of a quarter staff, which is kind of just over your, above your head, suddenly doo, shoots off even higher over to a, I think it's, is it a 10 foot? Ten foot, isn't it, Van? Sure, I think so. Yeah, ten foot is is very yeah, right. It extends up to like ten foot, so it's just huge now. Just I like it. Where, did you say this before or after I went inside? Uh, <laughs> As you're it, going through the door, so it's like <laughs> I, I like I like the dick idea. inside. I like the idea that it extends from the bottom, so he's holding the top of it, and he gets extended upwards into the air. <laughs> and yeeted off yeah. the ship. <laughs> it gives you a little bit of a lift. <laughs> you can, I mean, uh, you kind of like freak out, twist your body in the air and land on your feet. I just I just oh. chuckle watching it happen to Kashan. <laughs> I don't know, I see, it, I see it more as Kashan gets stuck at the top <laughs> of this perfectly <laughs> balanced pole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, how do feet. I uh, put this back to normal? Say the command word again. Uh, the, the, what was it? <laughs> Zippity dip. <laughs> Zippity dip. <laughs> no. Zippity yip. Zippity yip. It goes back get... to a quarter size. I didn't get to pick this, you know. And if you just say yip, it just goes all the way back down to a small little. Okay, well, like, oh, like the size of a cigar. <laughs> I gotta write this stupid dust. <laughs> uh, where is it? Extending an... pole. Extending pole. Hmm. Yeah. 
they just act as a cool stuff. You can say those command words. I haven't got a sheet for it or anything, but oh, it's okay. a fairly, I'll put fairly it common room. magical item. Or if you want to pole vault, or if you need to... Yeah, you can pole vault yeah. with it, for sure. Like, hold it between two objects. Clothesline yeah. someone. <laughs> it's not as strong as an immovable rod, but, um, yeah. Nonetheless. All right, so, Levan, you're going into your meditative trance. I mean, you think you're going into a trance. <laughs> no, I know. No. <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, you go off and rest. Um, I'd, probably, yeah. I'd probably do it inside the first room of the thing I'm creating. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, if anyone was to come visit, it looks like a door behind the door. Gotcha. Okay, like cool. Fancy looking and elegant. All right. So, uh, Karius, are you heading to sleep as well? Yeah, I'm sleeping on the deck. On the deck? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, in that case, then. Cool. In that case, then we'll jump to um, Irene then. Why is there a door there? Oh, yeah. What was that? Zippity Yip Electric Boogaloo 2 oh. for the deck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the ultimate, that's the like full length one. Okay. So, Irina? Mm. I have a question. You said this was like the room, warmest room on the mm. ship. I wouldn't say that actually. I yeah. changed my mind. Because there's actually a, there's literally a fireplace inside the, <laughs> inside the ship. Okay, in which case I kind of need to know on a scale of 1 to 10 how cold she is right now. Cold. I would say pretty cold, but it's not like it's freezing cold. Yeah, but, but she doesn't have candle wick. That's true. Yeah, I would say it's fairly cold because there's no um, what? there's the fans on effectively that are blowing and trying to get the haze to go through the vent, which channel. She's probably through. nicked all the blankets off the bed. Then by this point, she's probably like trying to keep warm. Okay. As you're keeping warm and you're tuning into the crystal, you're almost kind of slightly nodding off because of its long, tedious activity, just trying to focus. And you see the pulse of the crystal kind of ebb and flow. It's almost hypnotic. And then you're kind of just drifting off in your snug, cozy blanket for. Um, you hear what sounds to be like glass. Someone hitting a like a tuning fork, like a ping, and it rings like like glass. Okay. Um, you can play at this game. Um, I'm wondering if I can. Uh, they're not made of glass, but I'm going to kind of try and use the compass and the monk emblems that belong to my mother and just clink them together in time with it. <laughs> oh, okay. So, it was just a single one, but as you hit them together and you make your own sort of sound, you hear it again, this time clearer, and this time it comes from within your mind, rather than actually hearing it in the room. It sounds like it's ringing inside your head. Ding. And it actually even matches the... T it matches the kind of... Yeah, the actual um, tone that you just made. Okay. Um... Do it again, then. <laughs> Um, it, uh, you so say you do it once more again. Is that what you said? Mm-hmm. Okay, it repeats it back to you quicker this time. <laughs> okay, um... I think my brain's trying to figure out what note. Um... How about you speak clean? I'm, I'm just trying to figure out, um, 
I don't really speak a language that's kind of melodic, so um, do I get the sort of feeling that the the clinky noise is almost like when Candlewick does his sort of the heat differences when he's trying to give me a response, or yes, but also entirely different at the same time. That's a helpful answer. <laughs> In other words, it feels like a form of communication, and yet that type of communication is both different and its personality is completely different. Okay, um... I'm gonna try... I don't know. Do I know Morse code? I'm gonna try Morse code and see what happens. All right. Morse so code you, out hello. You Morse, out, well, Morse code out hello, and uh, it actually repeats it as well. Ooh. So far, all it has done is copy you. So all you can you can either assume that it's responded and understands you, or it's just copying everything you do. Um, okay, uh, let's go... How fast are we travelling? Can I tell from in here by the, 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 the mist and the smoke? You look outside, there's hard to, it's hard to tell judged on your surroundings because it's just cloud and sky, but there is a little gauge up top on the helm that does indicate and you're going very fast, I would say. And you said there's a fan going as well. Yeah, there's, there's sort of a okay. fan inside inside this room, with pushing the haze into a vent. Okay, I'm gonna take the two items and I'm gonna clink them together to make the word slow. But I'm gonna do it slowly, as if, come on, we can slow the pace a bit. Oh. So you're doing the the sound slowly mm. okay interesting because you said it sped up so i'm now like okay let's get it to slow down when mm. i did the clinking you said it did it faster yeah as a response mm. so i'm gonna try and do it like the word slow slowly to sort of this is what it mm. means i see you're teaching it it's, it's semi-sentient so it's roll an insight check Right. If not my best. Ten. It again copies you, and it has seemed to match the pace. And although it doesn't feel like the ship's going slower, you do see the pulse of the crystal outside begin to slow. Let me see if I can even change that. Part. Uh, here we go. Oh. You see it? Change? Mm -hmm. The pulse has slowed. Of light. Okay. Um. And it, from your insight, it either understands you, or you've just now taught it what that means. Okay, um... I'm gonna try and teach it sort of left and right, but to get the directions, I'm gonna sort of shift myself so that I'm behind it, so I'm facing the front, towards the front of the ship, with my back towards the back. Oh. And I'm gonna take them and hold them to the, the like the left side and clink out the word left. <laughs> And then do the same on the right to see if I can teach it that. So it copies again, but it doesn't feel like the ship is turned or tilted in any way. But it does look like the it does look like the glow is more bright on the side that you are standing. 
each time. Okay. Um, Direct so once... Yourself. So once that's happened, I'm going to go with... Sort of, I'm going to try up and down next, because that's the way, main one we want, is for, like, the up and down situation. Because that's Good. where it seems to get carried away. <laughs> Very carry, nice. carry us away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you... How do you represent up and down? So I am gonna I'm gonna stand up um full as I can on tippy toes and just tap out up. And then obviously because I don't want it to start going up, I'm gonna go like obviously low down at the end and then tap down um to try and get it. Okay. Yeah, it seems to again sort of follow your sounds. But um Again, you're not sure whether it's just understanding direction or if it's just copying it, but the light does seem to shine <laughs> up and does shine up onto the light, onto the onto the ceiling. And then the as you go onto the ground or the, the floor rather, it, it does start to shine and the haze kind of like lowers slightly as well. Mm. But it's not like the haze is in its control, it seems. Because afterwards, it kind of just floats back up and wafts there. It's not... It's 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 a tricky and slow process, but I'm going to stay over the course of the next few hours. I feel like you've started to make some understanding of back and forth communication. I'm also going to do one last one. Uh, like, uh, important one. And I'm actually going to tap out the word Luna. And I'm actually mm. going to put my hand on the crystal after I've tapped it out and say Luna. Interesting. Okay. This is... For the first time, it doesn't repeat back. And you're saying the word, right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't repeat it. That's fine. But can you roll me another insight check? Uh, that's not my name, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> What's um, your language? Yeah, so <laughs> Jesus. get the idea that it, all this time you've been associating a direction or something with a sound and as it tries to associate that sound with itself uh, it doesn't seem to understand it and you get the feeling that it doesn't understand an alphabet or a language necessarily as you kind of spelt it out didn't you you're like trying to I Did tapped it. out the sort of Morse code for it, mm, and mm. then I said it as I put my hand on it. Yeah. It's under... Okay, so it does understand that you're trying to teach an alphabet, but it is yet from learning the whole thing. That's fine. The, the aim isn't to teach it like an alphabet. The, the aim is to teach it sort of... Uh, because it seems to make vibrations, right? Because it's like a tuning fork. Mm -hmm. So it's to teach it the sort of... The, the beat of the Morse code and then the word that matches it in our language. So if we see we, if it can feel the vibrations of us saying it, it can associate it with that command yeah. word, which I'm then saying, I'm like placing my hand on it to say, that is you. I see. Um, okay. It, after a while, finally responds, but it doesn't do so with the same thing you said. It does two notes. One is high, followed by one low. I repeat it? You repeat it? So what with the high and the low back to it. Okay. Um, yeah, it repeats it back again. 
Um, okay. Almost, potentially, uh, potentially, uh, like... After a while, it kind of feels like a, like a, like a doorbell. Almost kind of, like, goes ding, dong. And my brain says, obviously, Luna is two syllables, so Luna. But... Do, you, do you say Luna? Yeah. It goes low, high. And it goes boom, ding, to kind of match the sounds of Lu being low and then Ah being high. So it goes low, high. Okay, but the so thing I'm... it did before that was definitely high and low. So interesting. We cannot say. <laughs> But uh, it's an interesting note that this thing is definitely intelligent. And all this time, Irina, all the notes have been inside your head. Mm. And you take that to mean that you have likely attuned to the crystal. <laughs> I made friends with the ship. I, well, I think I did. I, don't, I can't confirm this. <laughs> it could murder me in my sleep still. <laughs> uh, okay. So that's a start. So that's that's good. That's good. Um, I'm, I'm going to give the crystal hat and be like, all right, um, I'm going to go before I get frostbite and my fingers fall off. Um, but I'll, uh, I'll come back in the morning to say good morning. Hmm. Um, and I'm gonna sort of uh, stumble my way to try and find where Andy is with Candlewick yeah. so I can warm That's myself up. Probably up as you give it a small... probably sleeping with Candlewick oh. onto it. As you give it a small pat, just like a, a good crystal, uh, you do feel a slight pulse of warmth come from it. Hmm. But it seems like Perhaps try to. Perhaps to, I mean, roll one last insight check. Let's see what that meant. <laughs> Natural 20. It has. You've been speaking its language, or rather, trying to communicate on a level that it can understand. And it seems like the first time, as you go to leave and you're patting it, it tried to communicate in a way that you would understand a language that you would understand which i'm hoping that <laughs> um warmth temperature and uh, because it seems like it knows perhaps when it was assaulting candlewick perhaps there was some communication between the two then and it definitely understood that candlewick communicates via temperature you can imagine if candlewick was being like pushed away he would definitely get heat I would get hot and try to like push something away with heat, but uh, yeah. Okay, um, okay. I'm gonna try and shout for Andy because I don't think I can climb the crow's nest. Does she, would she, would she hear this? She's half, she's asleep. That's true, yeah, she would be asleep. <laughs> going to freeze to uh, death okay um Chaclo would probably hear you because i don't imagine him really sleeping much just or not okay. much just that, that'll, that'll do the job uh, um Chaclo. yeah what's up i need you to do me a favor just uh fly up she can't really lift her arms up there Ow. uh um, just you if, if you can throw candle wick down or Better yet, wake Andy up so she can bring him down. Big help. Okie dokie. Um, so Taclo will fly up and just sort of... I'm honestly picturing Andy literally cuddling it like it's a teddy bear. So he just stares for a moment, <laughs> just like... Hmm. Hmm. And then just like... Sort of taps her on the shoulder with his tail, just like... Um, Andy... Um, well, I would imagine she's not a very heavy sleeper considering yeah. her past. So yeah. she probably can't. She probably wakes up just from a light nudge or a tap or whatever. 
and just kind of looks at Taklo bleary eyed. Um, Andy would like Can to whip back now, if that's okay. Good eye, Mandy. Um, <laughs> Irina. Irina. <laughs> right. Taklo's like, oh yeah, I'm sorry, I'm still getting used to you guys. I should know Irina though. I'm I, I, I just got woken up, so <laughs> anyway, well, sort of. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, Irina would like a kind of whip back. She's okay. down at the bottom. She would have climbed up, but she appears to be honestly, she almost looks like a popsicle. Okay. She's I, a bit weirded out by that, and it's like, oh, okay. And he come, comes down with it, and he's she looks at Irina. She... Irina is probably bordering on blue right now. Like, you are a popsicle. Give. <laughs> yeah, she she hands it. It was like, don't you produce your own body heat? No, that goes to him. And <laughs> she just points to the scabbard. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> stupid. There's always a downside when you make a pact with something and you're separated from it. And she's just like rubbing like the feeling back into her arms using the scalp. <laughs> back scratcher. Remind me never to make a thing. And she just heads back up to the crow's yeah. nest. Oh. All right. And Irina, do you go back to your bed? Well, no, because my bed is on the deck because I don't have a room downstairs when I'm sleeping. Um, in case of nightmares. So she's going to oh. sleep on deck, but she's just going to sort of wrap Candlewick in like her coat and just be like I'm never moving There's three people sleeping on deck, sure There's so <laughs> many beds down there but you decide no well, Until no. we fireproof a room, she ain't sleeping Wait, who's nowhere who's down there on deck? Me <laughs> and Andy oh, and... <laughs> I mean, Carius, Carius is sleeping on deck for the time being, just until he's more used to the ship purely so that he, if something goes wrong he can get to the helm quicker and besides, he's used to being on a ship. And quite often, he'd be like almost like on the prow of the ship. Like, mm. but he'll just stay here. He's enjoying the night light that is the glowing crystal. All right. So the night descends. Can we just take a really quick break? Yeah, we should go for a quick. Just while it's quiet. Thank you. Yeah. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. It is the dead of night on the airship SS Kiasta, and everyone is fast asleep or in their meditative trance. Through the party on top, through the party are atop the deck, trying to get to sleep. The villain is in his own little place, and so I'd like a sham to make me a perception check with disadvantage. <clears throat> Natural. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Right. Uh, am I technically being assisted because I have Egbert? No. <laughs> Why not? Even He's if listening was, as well. Even if he was, it'd be a flat roll, and you only rolled once, which is your first roll, so it'd still be a natural one. Alright, cool. You hear nothing but the slow creaks of the ship as you sail on. That's it. Cool. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> um. I don't buy it. There's something off about that. Bye. <laughs> Let me just check to see if I had inspiration. Give me a second. It's I... fine. If we get marooned by, like, seagull pirates, I'm down with that. No. Mm. It's not. It's gonna be the that the clockwork the, robot. Well, yeah, it's gonna be the bozo with his clockwork robot. Sneaking around the ship in the morning. I'd like everyone on top deck to roll me a perception check. With or without disadvantage. This is normal. Yeah, you're coming. You're awake. You're well. You're waking up. Here's an interesting thing. Am I able to see through my book when the book is on the boat? Yeah, but your book's not in the boat, is it? It's in the... No, no, no. no I, I left it outside my room. Get a 23 from the pen. You didn't tell me you'd done that. What, sorry? You didn't think, tell me you'd done that. No, I put it in the in the chat because... I would have assumed it'd be with you because you need it to cast a spell. Okay. I was just wondering if, if I, that could happen. Um, potentially, oh, but you would, you would need it in order to cast the spell. What about what about my raven? Your raven could probably chill outside. Yeah. But... Just, just wondering if it cancels out any spells being in such a space or any magical effects. Well, if you want to do that next time, sure. But okay. for now, we've already part. We're already going on. Oh so, no. Nah. I wasn't going to do a perception check, I was just checking. Darius, you're uh, fast asleep. <laughs> um, however, Andy, I thought it would be Andy, because she is at the highest point on the crow's nest, so this makes perfect sense. <clears throat> Andy, you wake up to the sound of a horse whinnying. <laughs> That's not a best in for horse impression, but it's something like that. How did a horse get up here? <laughs> you just hear it sort of up here with the somewhere around you. You're like rubbing your eyes clean of your sleep and you're looking around. It sounds like it's it sounds like it's above you. Do I see anything? Um you kind of peer out into the to the distance, you see a lot of white fluffy clouds. And again you hear that kind of whinnying sound again. And it sounds panicked, it sounds troubled, um, and as you like peer across, you suddenly see a shape kind of move between the clouds, and it leaves like a swirl of white behind its behind itself. You kind of try to call to it, I suppose. Uh... You know how um, you would call to like get a horse to move or get its attention. You know, with like little clicking and whatever so they yeah. click their tongue. I don't, I don't know if that's a technical term. My sister rides horses, so I should know if there is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say you make a, a clicking sound and you start to see something emerge from the clouds as it's attracted to this noise. And let me see where it is. Yeah, there he is. 
to grab the tile. So, out of the air, you see something <clears throat> that's kind of brownish in color. It definitely looks like a horse. You can see it's a little white tufty bit on the center of its forehead. So this still got a little bit of fuzz around its ears, and uh, suddenly you see another a pair of wings woof, kind of waft out from the side of it, and. She's again, literally gone into child mode again. She's just oh. The wings also share a little bit of fuzz about them. Oh, oh it's not fair. It's a Pegasus like foal. Oh my god! She like gets out some of the food that she's probably got. Probably she's got like some of the food in her brute in her pocket or some of the nuts, and she's like, "Jimmy, Jimmy." Okay, it looks uh, as you see its flight. It's sort of flapping with one wing and then flapping with the other completely out of like time and tune and you start to see it kind of like get attracted to the the sound of or the smell of food rather and as it's coming towards you you see it kind of veering and tumbles and does a barrel roll to its side and it nearly goes straight into the sails <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh, oh, no. Into the sails. um 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 <laughs> Where's my sheet? I don't... I'm trying... I don't... I don't... Something around. Uh, can I use Mage Hand to try and guide it? Like, pull it and help it land on the deck? Yeah, sure. Um, I'll tell you what, let me roll something real quick. Uh... I'm literally imagining the little one from Pantina. Oh, Alright, so you do guide it, and uh, the mage hand grabs the hold of its head, you untangle it from the sails, and it kind of slides down, and it, it sort of lands on its, on its front first, like to keep forward a bit, and then spins around, and then tries to right itself up with its legs. And it looks around, and it, you can see it kind of gets excited, it's flopping its hooves across the deck and looking around, but it's, um, it seems completely fine. Like, there's no injuries visible on the creature. And as it kind of, like, looks back at its wings, it kind of flaps them, and it's still, like, flapping them, like, one yeah. at a time. She immediately comes down, and she's starting to come over and, you know, feed it and try and befriend it. Does the sound <laughs> of clopping hooves on the deck wake me up? Yeah, yeah, at this point, you were definitely kind of wake. Tara wakes up, begins to walk over to the steering wheel, and is just like, Stares for a moment, just sort of pinched himself. I'm like, nope, I'm awake. And <laughs> that's a Pegasus. Can we keep him? He's so cute. Wait, is it a boy or a girl? <laughs> Are you going to check? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's only one way to check. To be fair, Irene has <laughs> probably already whipped out like her book and is already like drawing it and like internally nerding out. This is like an Albert but a horse. Um, one is a boy to an Albert horse. Carrius just sort of. Oh, walks, it's a boy. It's a boy. Um. Actually, yeah, Carrius will walk over. Think about it. Yep. Do you look over? You look and see a very excited Pegasus at the top of the deck. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> However, its wings. Uh, just flapping around like it's a dog's tail wagging excitedly. Who is your cute little Pegasus? Who is your cute Pegasus? Hmm. Oh, yes. Jeez, um, Carrius, can we please keep him? He's so sweet. Um, I he mean, probably has parents somewhere up here. Yeah, that. They don't just a... pop out of the clouds. And you know what? This one did, but that's not the point. Um. <laughs> oh, okay. What <laughs> Carrius? What would? Harris know about Pegasus because I can, I know what language they speak normally, but not Carrius might not. You know that they do not speak a language, but that they do understand language. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let me just ch check something. Right. Uh, they understand language, but right. So I'm going to buy a taclo telepathically communicate it the simple idea of just calming down and relaxing because mm. Taco can do that <laughs> okay so um hey you try to like calm it down 
And in this excitement, it seems like it's completely forgotten all about uh, what it was doing before. And uh, it looks around to you, kind of like tilts its tilts its head, carries. Does seem to understand maybe some of what is being said, but um, it's obviously very, very young and likely not intelligent enough to know everything yet. But okay. still, after um, it sort of calmed down for a moment, um, you suddenly see it like looks like it remembers something. And it turns its head round and looks up again into the sky, looks around, and it starts like flapping its wings, trying to like get up and I into think the air. Lost. Yeah, Carius actually would say that. Um, excuse me, are you lost by any chance? Um, it's, Where's it's your mother stopped. and papa? It stops and and then turns around, and uh, it it. It goes to nod slightly and then quickly shakes its head and then. <sighs> it uh, seems, seems a little confused on that one. Are you looking for something or someone? It starts uh, kind of like clip clip clopping on the ground like really really fast, and then it does a little. It runs around in a circle. I roll an insight to see yeah, if I in what it's trying to purvey. Yes. 18. You get the sense that it is running from something. Oh. Right, well, and you're then safe for board the Kiasta. It then um, goes up towards Andy. And um, just slightly nuzzles into their cloak, and then and then looks up again into the sky. It's and okay, uh, little fella, we'll look after you. And sort of like wraps her arms around its neck and all that. Does it seem to be specifically trying to nuzzle into Andy or nuzzle into Andy's cloak? <laughs> nuzzle into Andy for some sort of protection, but then. Straight afterwards, and as you kind of like go to pat it and calm it down again, it seems to get this look of concern and rushes out to the deck balcony and then looks out across it. And it looks be looks to be looking for something. Can I crack out the uh, spyglass and start looking around in the direction that it's? Yes, you can. Roll me a perception check with advantage. Mm. 18. <laughs> Peering out, carefully scanning the horizon, there doesn't appear to be anything obvious, as it's a very cloudy day. But you do, do you start to see something almost completely camouflaged as the clouds themselves? A white feathered wing just barely crests behind one of the clouds and kind of wafts into it. And with an 18, you start to see something else. Another darker shape it looks to be, again, another pair of wings. And about five seconds after the pair of white feathered wings went behind that cloud, that darker set of feathers go behind it. Does it look like they're, like, flying together, or one is chasing the other? Yeah, with it being five seconds apart, you can likely guess something is chasing. Yep, is the dark wings chasing the light wings, or are they fleeing together from something? Hmm. It seems as though one thing is trying to lose something within the clouds. Right. It's like using the clouds as cover, like as if, a, as, like a, a a monkey would hide in the trees <laughs> using the leaves. It's trying to use the clouds to lose its predator. Wow. 
But whatever they are, they're both feathered. He just caught the air, caught the um, wings of each. Carrier sort of twirls his glaive and like, well, looks like something might need a hand. Uh, do we steer the ship over there or, or are we going ourselves? I mean, go for the air and lint of supply. Surprise. Um, this thing's a bit inconspicuous, really. Um, right. And if it's after the little one, we're better off keeping him down here. Right. It probably won't be comfortable going below deck. Um, Andy, do you want to look after the flying horse? Yes, please. <laughs> Um, much. <laughs> if you stay here and look after the horse, I'll go have a look to see if I can see what it is, I guess. Um, Maybe you can lure it down out of the clouds if it, if whatever is being chased is probably its parent, so we could probably protect it down here. Yeah, right. So Don't do anything course. stupid. Carriers, take what? loads of fruit and nuts with you. Yeah, Carrot, <laughs> take some probably would have some anyway it's just like right i'm gonna leave tackler with you just in case i need communication and then karis is just gonna go all right off i go <laughs> i'm gonna keep looking through the spyglass but i'm gonna track where karis is going okay. and try and keep an eye on these shapes okay as you keep an eye on the shapes you see a, a very long tail you just catch the end of it and it seems to whip around through the clouds, like whoosh, whoosh, swooshing them, almost trying to separate them and disperse them. Uh, the tail looks to be long, leathery, almost like a rat's tail. And at the end, there seems to be these tiny little spines as well. And uh, the rest of you guys down below, Kishan, you've definitely woken up to the sound of who's clip-clopping on the deck, and Lavelle and your spell would have also come to an end. It's 24 hours. Well, you can either stay in there for the full day if you really want, but you know it would be about morning this time. Yeah. You probably have woken up. Yeah. I'd just be working on things. Okay. Until, until right. someone... So he's uh... ignoring everything that's happening. That's fine. I'm not... I'm... I'm... I'm technically not on the ship right now. So, considering um, that this thing seems to be wanting to get rid of the clouds, and the other thing wants to be hiding in the clouds, mm. let's add some more clouds. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna cast it. What? Is that one to cast? No. That one. I'm going to cast. <laughs> Fog cloud. All right, fog cloud. But I don't know where to place the measure template. Um, so you can just place it above the ship somewhere over here. Where'd it go? It disappeared. I don't know how to drop that back out. Yeah. Um, uh, just... uh, just that. Do you want to go? No, I can do this. Uh, I'll just temporarily restore the spell slot. And I'll cast it again. Now give me the thing. Uh, right. You could just do something like that. Uh, how big is it? 30. 20 foot. Huh. There you go. Okay, like that. Cool. Alright. So you begin crafting and producing this cloud to try and just stop whatever this hunter is. And. At this distance, Carriers, I'd like you to also make a perception check. This is based on hearing. Yeah, I don't have any bonuses based on that, as far as I'm aware. You can just about hear the kind of billowing of wings, perhaps. But there seems to be a sound that something's making. Um, you're not sure whether it's... Maybe it's just the wind whistling around. But it, you can't really make out what sound it is making. It's it's obviously you're flying quite a distance as well, so you've got that. 
uh, that kind of billowing of wind in your ears, kind of drowning out a lot of things. Nonetheless, uh, you're getting right up next to it. So, um, how far out did you fly? Just uh, so I know. Uh, well, how far away was it? I'm basically flying up to it as much uh, as I yeah, can. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, so you've flied out like at least um, a few hundred feet. Yep. And you're creating these clouds to try and distract and cover whatever this thing is. Yeah. And, uh, well, I guess I'll have to roll a perception check with disadvantage. And the other thing can make a stealth check. Oh, not caring. <laughs> yes. You are now me. <laughs> uh, oh. Okay. Oh. I'm gonna roll a perception check. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, cool. Uh, in that case, then, your little clouds that are stretching and kind of being pushed into the bigger amount uh, seem to attract something. And you hear the um, heavy panting coming towards you, Karius. And it seems to enter into your cloud. You can't see it from this side. Whatever it is, you hear the wings kind of. Carius gets ready to defend himself with his other glaive. <laughs> with his other glaive, yeah. It's a glaive. It's a glaive. Uh, it's <laughs> swirl around in the fog momentarily. And it sounds like it's hovering within there, like flapping its wings to keep itself aloft within this fog cloud. Hmm. But so, are you yourself? You yourself are not in the fog cloud, are you? No, I'm just outside it. Like, okay. Hmm. Whatever it is, is trying to remain hidden. Okay, so take foglets. Does do I think that it's the white winged one or the black winged one that's trying to hide in there? Um. It's heavily obscured, so the only way to know is to go inside and have a look. Did I see, obviously I'm keeping an eye from below, did I see it go in? Uh, roll a perception check. With advantage. I mean, well, it's flat, I guess, because it's now heavily obscured, so... Um, no, yeah. you didn't. No. It's no. very well hidden, which is a good thing for it. Right. Uh, but can I see the other one? Oh, the other one? Yeah, I'll tell you what, you can look for that as well. Let's see what it gets. Okay, you're going to have to roll a new check for that. As you kind of look towards the cloud, you can't see that. Okay, you do see something, another clue as to what this thing could potentially be. Um, you saw feathers last time, but now you get a better, a better shape to the wings. They actually appear leathery, but there is feathers on the body of the creature, and long, sharp, hooked claws as well. And although its head is um, partially obscured, you do see kind of a flash of red. Do I like, know what it is? Just judging on what I can see of it. Taloned claws, feathered hind, leathery wings, and a rat-like tail. That's a tricky one. Roll me an arcana check. It's a rat-like tail. Mm-hmm. You are unsure as to what the hell this combination of things okay. are. But I know whatever it was chasing has flown into the fog now because this one is not obscured. Right, it's looking like it's going between clouds, still searching, but it has not found. Okay, I'm going to get Taclo to pass a message to Karius to let him know this information that whatever is in the cloud is the one that's being chased. Alright. So <sighs> it's got like this red frill. Be very careful, whatever's up there with you. Not friendly. Yeah. Hmm. Carious, 
Are you, you're not inside the cloud, so I'm just gonna... I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna take off one of my boots and hurl it at wherever Lavellan is. <laughs> he's, he's below I'm, I'm trying to keep an eye on things, but I'm like, get, get, get out here! Uh, there's, there's going to be plenty of noise for Lavellan. No. <laughs> Are you whacking on the door? <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, Lavellan! The fella that I've well, tried to sleep. Okay. Kishan, you swing the door open, and there is another door right in front of you. You're like, yeah. Are you expecting to see him there in the chair, and it's just another door in front of you? <laughs> I open that door. That one wow. seems to be locked. Uh, I go into my bag, and I want to try and pick the lock. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Can that work? <laughs> uh, sure. Roll me a thieves to look I mean, with your dex plus your proficiency. Uh, so... Do you have thieves um, I do, yes. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Technically, it's a matter of who I let uh, in. That would be plus my proficiency. Yeah, which so is 20. Plus 4? <laughs> 24, okay. I think you do a, What's our proficiency? Ex, yeah, you do an expert job of picking this lock. Plus five, so ten. And <laughs> you can feel the, like the each pin undo magically, and it seems, well, not magically, but um, it definitely feels like you've done it. You've, you've, you've picked the lock. Okay. Okay. I open the door. All right. You open the door. And you see a beautiful foyer with columned pillars, and there seems to be vines draped around them. Ah, you took that. And trees. No sign of them, though. Large silver trees with blue leaves. Oh, yeah. Large silver trees with blue leaves. And you see a, a twin set of staircases, like, going around to a balcony. I'll just there seems shout. to be doors to the left and right. I'm just shouting, Lavellad! Yeah? We need it! Oh, already? Yep, okay. It, you just see him come rushing like down. Oh like, my god, it's your there. magic hut, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I walk in. <laughs> uh, you walk in and you go smack into like a pane of glass. Oh, I need to actually. Like, and I just click my finger, and he can step through. Yeah, and then you kind of uh, <laughs> fall forward. <laughs> and I we come need rushing. to talk about this, and, but we 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 need to go. A building a thing. What's happening? I don't know. I a hear a lot of shouting and what sounds like a horse upstairs. Um, a horse uh, in the sky? I don't know. At the did it have Let's... wings? I don't know. A horse with wings? That's stupid. It's a horse Think about wings. what you just said. Yeah, can... <laughs> uh, no, one of them. Right, Not the so... first time. Yeah, um, no. Right. Come on. As you say that, and Kishan rushes out of the door. Uh, which can't you're... move. You'd be sure, rushing out and the pause it. Just such an occasion. So, as this happens, um, you still outside the cloud, Carius, and this thing, mm -hmm, natural 20, spots you. It sees what is outside of the fog cloud, and you suddenly see, Carius, a beady, bright eye, eye like, boom! kind of flare up and actually emits light and it feels like you're being painted with a laser targeting system because you can feel something in your body shifting changing slightly slight fear is kind of tingling through your spine and as it locks eyes on you you hear this almighty squawk this that echoes out into the sky oh my god as the huge thing flies towards you, I need everyone to roll initiative. 
I oh, and if you click the combat tracker, you should have it all there. Uh, combat tracker. Uh, which one's the Tim combat tracker? It's that one, isn't it? So, yep. So I will. Hey. Uh, I forgot how you do it. Uh, just click on the dice next to your name. In the combat track, which is the little fist. What the? Oh, oh come man. on! I thought it was going to be like a scary fight. But no! <laughs> what is that? Scary fight. What is that? <laughs> That's not what I think. That's a cockatrice, isn't it? It is indeed a cockatrice. No, oh, don't, don't throw petrification at me. <laughs> That's mean. No. <laughs> Wait, petrification? Okay, never mind, yeah. this will do. As I've said, Carius feels this slight tingling within his body, a fear that's deep set, but you look towards the creature and it has not petrified you with its sight, but its beak is very sharp. That's all I'll say to that. Nonetheless, this creature begins to fly towards you, and as this squawk and screech echoes out, uh, Irina, you start to see something else emerging from the clouds, closing in fast, in a formation that resembles like a squadron of uh, hawks or something. Regardless, it looks like a flock of birds coming straight towards you. And uh, you reveal them onto the map. No. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. I... Hold on, got the wrong thing selected. There we go. Okay, cool, cool, cool. There we go. At the front of the ship, you see them dive bombing in. And at the top of the round, we have Andy. I mean, her concern is, of course, protecting this foal. So, mm. you know, that's, that's her priority right now. So, I guess what she would try and do is get it somewhere hidden okay where would you like to go there's lots of stairs and to the I lower mean, deck i'm not <laughs> gonna try and get it downstairs if i can help it i don't want to kind of like panic it and shove it into a tiny room or something mm. um there's like a lifeboat next to you you could try yeah and... i was wondering if maybe turning the lifeboat upside down and yeah. hiding underneath it irene has been using it as a makeshift kind of bed <laughs> she yeah. won't care if, if it means the little baby is safe it's fine so there's cushions and blankets in there as well all the comforts of home so yeah she'll, she'll try and you know okay. turn, turn the life bar upside down and beckon the pony to hide underneath it with her. okay would you like to roll me um an animal handling check mm -mm. Nice. 23. Well, okay. It's If it had had eyes on its mother, maybe it would be of a different demeanor. But right now, it trusts you and is going to follow your, follow your lead. And it hides right underneath the uh, lifeboat, fully protected and fully contained in there. And it kind of just hides under the blanket as well, for good measure. Yeah, she would, she would throw one of the blankets over it and just kind of like stroke it and, you know probably you know even sing it a little song to try and help calm it like a lullaby or something oh. all right um i guess that takes your action and we'll jump to some of these cockatrice uh let's do begin combat there we go okay That flies really fast. Okay. You see them swooping in, Irina. They are way faster than what you initially thought. And there's not just one of them, but a whole host of them. They look like they're <laughs> they look like they're migrating. Uh to like a warmer climate, but perhaps they've encountered these Pegasus along the way. 
Now they're flying straight towards you as commanded by their squadron leader. That's going to use its action, the Velen. Did I make it out of my uh, mansion? You're of the, yeah, you're outside. Ah, I'd be there then. Well, here. Here, maybe. Yeah. 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 Uh, would I be able to make it up on deck by the time of my you can, movement? You can try. Uh, so, should I do the movement thing? It's going to cost uh, you 30 movement to go up to there. And then yeah. you would be on the deck. You'd be on the top deck. Oh God! What's happening? You you moved what? what I... I was trying to move. <laughs> <laughs> so you're there, which means that technically the, you're uh, you're here. Is that on? That's on top deck, isn't it? Technically. Mm. I mean, it, well, you would be on top deck. So like, if you came out of your room, you could be right here at the bottom of the mast. Yeah, that's why. And you do have in. like, like half your movement left. Okay, I'm looking to get on top of the deck itself. So, okay, so you can go up to there. Yeah, and that's my full movement. That is. Uh, do I see any of them in, in range? Uh, um, yeah, just... you do. You see everything that's on the map. Okay, 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 okay. Let's see. Ah, oh, it's just out of range of what I wanted to do. <laughs> right. I'll wait for it to get closer and cast a uh, phantasmal force and make it um, be able to, s to see that one of its other allies is the Pegasus it was looking for. Oh, okay, interesting. Is it something that it fears, though, isn't it? No, it doesn't have to be. You just okay, make it, it see something, and no matter what, if it fails the check, All right. it believes that is true. Gotcha, and gotcha. comes to some sort of logical explanation as to why. Wisdom no save, yeah. Uh, yes. Natural 20. Oh, wow. Wow. wow, indeed. Change your dice, man. Wow. They're loaded. <laughs> They're yeah. pretty good, aren't they? I don't like Foundry. All right. <laughs> so this creature just lets out a squawk of rebelliousness towards you, Lavellan. Seems completely unaffected. Yeah, it's, in it's intelligence, not wisdom, but yeah. Or is it? Okay. Doesn't make a difference. Natural oh, 20. Word. Was it? Yeah. What's your DC? 19. 19, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it might have intelligence. So <laughs> it might actually fail with a natural 20 here. Yeah. Um, really? Yeah. Oh, minus wow. Four. So. That 20 isn't an auto success. It, it thinks it's, it's. It thinks it's. Well, yeah. Only when attacked. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that. That's when it goes to move forward. It needs to be ten foot closer. So I've held that till it moves. Oh, I see. On this creature, right? Yeah. The closest one. Okay. Yeah. So it it will suddenly get like a, a scent and be able to right. see that the one behind it looks like um okay. the Pegasus it was looking for. Gotcha. Okay, Carius. Meanwhile, there is a fight taking place. Further away, <laughs> you can hear a number of different squawks within the air. They're about 200 foot from you, and they're heading straight towards your boat. Just... Uh, meanwhile, you're about uh, 100 foot away from this bigger creature that is spotted you and is flying towards you. Okay. Well, I guess it's time to play. Um... I just sort of look at this, it's flying straight towards me. Not going to ever get in range for one of the things I would normally do, so Carrot just literally points a finger and goes, boom, <laughs> lightning bolts <laughs> straight at it. Wow. Alright, lightning bolt. Good old lightning bolt. It fails. 
that time it does. <laughs> okay, we fry the thing. Uh, did that roll the damage, or did that just put the thing on there? It's rolled that, but if I put it in the way of it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't see the actual damage roll on the thing. Yeah, you need to actually hit it, I think. Oh, it's got... uh, I need to do what? <laughs> Sorry, I'm still. Okay, just, just roll the damage manually. Yeah, uh, there you go. Uh,. No, don't consume the spell to start. Just roll the damage. Oh, jeez! Okay, cool. That's, uh... That's rare. That's a lot of damage. Uh, yeah. so... 22 points of lightning damage strikes into this creature, <laughs> electrifying it. Um... It looks even more angry now. <laughs> As his talons bear like an eagle's coming towards you. A long tail is whipping around as it discharges the last remaining spot. Okay, and then, because I'm on my glaive, I'm trying to sort of lure it potentially into a better position. I am going to fly 50 feet closer to the ship. Okay, sure. And... So you're 250 feet from it now? Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to take my lightning bolt thing if I can get my guy to do that. Yeah. And Kishan. Cool. Uh, so, uh, with your assistance, would you be able to get me up on deck? You are already out on deck, technically. Oh. You are... Right. Yeah, thank you, Andy. Everything. Oh, okay. I... Well, Andy, sorry, Andy's on the. Yeah, no, Andy is right. Uh, how do I continue up there? Okay, I would <clears throat> gotta run up and hit this one. <laughs> okay. Um. Oh, is it up it's in the swooping sky? down, but it's in the air slightly. Oh, it's in oh. the air. Oh, perfect. So, uh, I'm going to reach into my satchel, uh, pull out the little stick. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to get down super low, and as I spring up, I say, Zippity yip electric boogaloo too. <laughs> nice. Alright. You're suddenly <laughs> propelled ten feet into the air. And as I come up, I wanna bring it round with the ten foot pole. <laughs> and okay. just like crack it down. Sure. Yeah. Okay. The roll load just a normal quarter staff attack. I was gonna say, do I actually have just a quarter staff? It's going to be a 10 foot reach. Oh no, that's effect, damage. For God's sake. Uh, right, I'm going to roll it with my normal stuff. Oh, oh. natural 20, okay. Oh, God. <laughs> I'll is. take it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it would be sick. Did it? So, Did it? just minus 2 to the damage, I guess? Because it's the same? Yeah, effectively, yeah. Um, uh, oof. About 20. It'd be 20 damage with the minus 2. I think it'd be 12 plus 8. Ow. Yeah. Okay, you crack this thing so hard, you can feel it. We can probably buckle and break underneath that. It's kind of like swirling into the air and you do an extra attack. Oh, uh, I do, yeah. So as I come down, I'll just kind of like bring my foot up and try and flick it out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 25 to hit. Well. And with that, its wings already bent and broken. You come down with your foot and snap its neck, and its body clatters onto the deck. Dead. No! My spell! <laughs> and 
I just say zip the you have and drop it. Yet. Uh, technically, yeah. You're holding it. I am. Uh, yeah, I say zip the yip and just drop it back down to a standard stuff. Okay. This works so well! <laughs> yeah. Oh. It's on using a new code. Uh, and yeah, so I'll just prepare. I do have a bonus action, but I'll wait well, for them to come. Your bonus action is to use the command word technique. Oh, we did. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. That's cool. You're all good. Um, it is one of the it's one of the front. So you can use your spell now, the Velen I'll say. Yeah. I'll say it fails, save right here. And immediately uses action to dash and flies back the other direction. So <laughs> <laughs> it kind of gets back to where it was started, really. Yeah. Um, and you get to go. Yeah, it'd be, be heading. Hard. It'd probably be heading towards this one. Yeah, something like that. Alright. It's going to be another one. Okay, so as it flies past, it's going to get an attack of opportunity. Yeah, <laughs> confused. Effectively. Uh, so, we'll do the pipe. Uh, ooh, it missed it, so I'm afraid. Alright, do you see it? Jules, he snaps towards his ally. And the other cover is kind of like, oh, a little bit panicked to see its own kind just turn on it. But uh, <laughs> it's going to keep flying forward as well. So it gets uh, 10, 15, 20. Yeah, okay. So it managed to get right up next to you, so that's going to end this go. And same for most of these. Uh, in the turn order. Yeah, okay. Just gonna move these guys. Gonna end their go there. And. Okay. In the middle of a fog cloud, you can hear a, still a heavy panting. But. I think it's still trying to remain hidden. Although, Carrius, what you do spot is the head of a white horse poke out of the cloud and start to look around, trying to see what's happening. It sees a huge flock of these cockatrices flying towards your ship. And it looks toward, looks straight into your eyes, Carrius. And it is a look of concern. It looks back to the ship and then looks around, intently searching for something. Carrius, in response, will just sort of point in the direction that the thing is and just sort of make like a sort of a clashing sound to suggest that there's a bitey thing in that direction. Okay. Uh, it looks over and. Okay. It's going to hold its action it's whilst it's still hidden within the cloud. It's so majestic. It seems to understand you. Okay. Speaking of which, the roosters go. Bring it. <laughs> so this would be a really terrible time to get back. Oh to my God. God. God! Okay, it flies straight towards you, swooping on leathery bat-like wings. A tail whips out, trying to hit you, Carrion, uh, because yep. it actually is in a reach. No wait, I have to actually. I think it has to dash to get here. So yeah, you see it's ready to whip in your face, but it's not got there just yet. However... Andreas just smiles. <laughs> Fried chicken! <laughs> Suddenly, um, as it lets out a squawk, you see a thief come flying from the cloud. And it's with advantage. <clears throat> Fifteen. Oops. It disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> it kicked so hard, both of them faded out of existence temporarily. Kicked into the elemental plane of air. Um, Alright, yeah. You see a hoof kind of just go wide of the creature, unfortunately. But the, it does seem to have its attention as the Pegasus reveals itself from the fog. And that's going to end this go. Okay. 
I got three cockatrice to move. And it's gonna be two. Oh my god, there's so many of them. And we're going to leave them there. And I believe we finally have Irina. Okay, um... Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to figure out the uh, way this works. Um, how do I place a spell? Do I just drag it? Uh, try clicking the spell from your character sheet. Yeah, okay. if you click the little dice icon, it should tell you, like... Um, oh, you place measure place. template, there we go. Yeah. Uh... Mm. And we're gonna stick it... Ooh! Ooh. There. Okay, that hits a good four of them. And uh, it's a intelligence save. So... That's a terrible damage roll, though. Look at that. Ooh. Okay, well, thank you. Oh, and the very hint score. Now they all fail. So there's still 22 damage to all of these creatures. Um, and then also on their turns, they roll a d6, and that gets taken away from their attack rolls and ability checks. Okay. They all look very, very confused at this mind blasting spell fries their fries their poor little bird brain. And they're all just like burr, burr, plucking and making these strange noises. Okay. So uh, do you do you have anything I suppose you want to do? Um you're very muffled by the way, is that my hearing or No, it's the same with me. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. As long as I'm not the only one. It's all you. Um, <laughs> um... I will, um, sorry, I'm just checking something really, really quick. Where am I? I've lost okay. it. Okay. Um, no, I think that's all I can do at the moment. Okay. Um, I'm just going to make sure I am almost like Andy is protecting the horse. I'm protecting the upside down boat. Okay, gotcha. Um, so I kind of want to stay within its range at the moment. Right. Um, gotcha. Because I have to. Oh my god, there's more of them. Yep. <laughs> there's lots. Oh, okay, my. so the static yeah. is gone. Uh, all right, that's their turn. It is the Pegasus form. They Aww. simply nuzzle into you, Andy. They are just wondering what's happened to their mother. But they are very sad. And now that'll end they go. Oh, crap. Wait until it pulls out a level 7 fireball. <laughs> Okay, and the last three cockatrice on the go. Oh my god, yeah. there's so many. I think we need to take out its leader. <laughs> on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> right. Mm -hmm. Labella. What is... Yeah? Do you have Circle of Death prepared today? <laughs> it might work this time. Fun. Andy, he'll go. Well, I have no well, idea what's actually going on out there because I am under a boat. Yeah, you, could take a <laughs> you could always take a little peek if you wanted. Just peek. Turtle. Yeah, um... She looks at the fall briefly and she's gonna go... Stay here. Be a good pony, just stay here. And she'll just, ju she'll just jump out for a second um, towards the other side, so like on the other side from where Irina is. Mm -hmm. And this uh, this Aww. is this is a 
This is me trying to do something clever. Um, because these are obviously kind of like, I don't know. Okay, what she basically wants to do, she gets out the violin and she's going to try and play just like a single very ear splitting note to try and kind of, I don't know what the right word for it is, kind of frazzle them a bit. To intimidate them. Yeah, sort of. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, so yeah, you're effectively trying to like intimidate them, let out this ear piercing sound louder than their own squawks in a, in an attempt to dismay them from attacking. Because it sounded like the command for them to launch this assault was given by the rooster itself, and that sounded like a, an ear piercing note. Yeah, so I guess she's kind of trying to almost challenge that by making, trying to make her violin make a sound that's even more intimidating to scare them off. Okay. Oh. All right. I'd like you to roll me a intimidation check as this violin screeches into the, into the sky. Uh, a 16. Okay. Let's see here. It seems like a couple of the creatures a little bit taken aback, but then you hear from the distance, as it, this creature has also heard it, it lets loose its own kind of screeching squawk again, <laughs> trying to push them on and command them to uh, come on. ignore this. Come on, come on. Uh, one come on, Andy. Lord of the cockatrice. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh, yes! Yes! <laughs> the uh, command of this rooster has been delayed as the, <laughs> all these cockatrices in unison sort of freeze in their flapping wings uh, for just a quick instance. They are frightened of you, Andy. <laughs> That's good, they can't go further forward. Okay, Lavellan, what are you up to? Uh, uh, right, I'm and then blow them up. <laughs> oh god, okay. <laughs> They're all in a decent, well, mo majority are in a decent position to... Uh, can I drag this out? Am I able to drag this out? Oh, try yeah. clicking it. Uh, try, try clicking your spell from your sheet. Yeah, if you cast yeah. the spell, it says it will place a marker and you can then move it. Oh, okay. I didn't realise that. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Where... New tools have plenty of fun, but... Where's the learning curve? Yeah. Cast spell. Yeah. Is it doing it? Ah, oh, there you go. Let's see. What's best? I'm going to do it. The... Right in front of Kashan's face. Is he taking it? Oh, it's another no. small spell. Okay. It's a fireball. Oh, nice. All right. It didn't roll the fireball onto the chat roll for some reason. Yeah, you need to... Weirdly, it doesn't also seem to roll the damage. I don't know why. Um, for those ones. Slash R uh, 86. Twenty-eight and a dexterity save from the mark. Okay, I can tell you immediately these two are KFC. <coughs> As for these ones, I'll roll the deck save. Above above the deck, by the way, it's not touching the deck. I'm not going to. Oh yeah, them. I mean they are flying above the deck anyway. Yeah, yeah. Helps. Uh, let's make this fast reading. Ooh. One oh, one of them saved. Well, yeah, one of them did save. Two fails. Uh, the other two are failing and fried. Oh, so they don't have 28 damage. They are only, yeah, small cockatrice. Okay, that's going to leave one left alive, very fried, with 
Taking 14 damage. Uh, um, can I grab it? Okay. And Any delete? more movement? Uh, no, I'll keep my distance. I don't know how to grab the, the circle and delete you click it. Click the ruler tool on the left. Ah, oh, the ruler tool. Carious. Right, so Carious is gonna perhaps give this thing. He's gonna play a little because that's the sort of person he is. He's going to move one, two, three to there. So he's actually moving close to this, which would seem <sighs> stupid. Um, but he's then gonna go, well, I hit you with the lightning. Here's some thunder, and then he's going to thunder step. <laughs> oh. Because <laughs> oh. he's, he's going for Matip. Um, uh, oh, okay. Is that a con save or a... Yes, it's a con save for everything within 10 feet, which is just it, basically. Gotcha. That's why I specifically moved that. Did that roll the damage? Mm -hmm. I specifically told you. Oh, the damage. It's, awesome. mm -hmm. uh, it still takes half, though. And. Twenty-one. Okay. To eleven. Yeah, and then I so I've moved so I moved fifteen feet to get there. I then teleport so I was two hundred and fifty feet away from the ship. Yeah. I then went two six five. I've then gone back ninety, so I'm at <laughs> one seven five. And then I'll continue the rest of my thirty five movement, bring it to one forty. Cool. Right. So, That's far too much math. There you go. <laughs> you can see, Carius, you've got a little thing above your head. Yep. That says 140. Cool. Yeah. There you go. I'm basically trying to lure it back to the ship, but also do some damage as I do so. Yeah, that's quite clever. <laughs> hey, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh. I'm trying to lure it back to the ship because I want to do the special thing that I got this level, but I need more of them near each other. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, good job. <laughs> Are you muted? Cameron? No. Sorry. There you go. Your turn. No problem. Uh, there's loads. Do the so, thing you do. from... Uh-huh. So what was that? Do the thing you do. Do the thing you do. Oh, do the thing I do. Uh, I mean, I would love to. <laughs> but... Uh, I was actually going to see if I could duck and dive over to this. Okay. Um... One of them is flapping kind of its wings right next to you. It would get an attack of opportunity first. Uh, yeah. All right. Comes in with a sharp razor-like beak. Disadvantage. Disadvantage. Yeah. And that misses it. anyway. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Kind of like tears into the wooden mast a little bit. Uh, but you get up to the left foot. And I'm assuming they're already loaded. Yes. Cool. I'm going to aim at the yes. big boy. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, Sorry. yes. Okay. Have I told you before what it is? Uh, the cockatrice. No, no. no. I can't remember what you said the damage was for this. Okay. The ballista is. Right? Plus six to hit. 3d6. Sorry, 3d10 damage. However, it is currently quite distant, so it's going to be disadvantage. Ooh. Oh, really? Yes. But you got plus six to hit. Uh, Do this. Yeah, why not? D20 plus six. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, there's no point. Mm. <laughs> okay. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh, indeed. Okay, you see this bolt 
<laughs> fly past two of the cockatrice kind of let out panic squawks as they do. It zooms towards this creature and it just looks towards this look looks directly towards where it came from, Kushan. With this eye that kind of glows within the sky. Uh, with my speedy agility, can I try and load it super quick with my bonus action? <laughs> um it cannot be reloaded that quickly, I'm afraid. Uh, Maybe if you had crossbow expert, I guess. It is. Okay. They are heavy bolts, but I'll just use the rest of my turn to <laughs> move to this it, one. It takes, it, it takes one action to load the weapon. Um, but there is another one. Yeah, I guess you could jump on that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I do have an extra attack. <laughs> oh, there. Okay. Go for it. <laughs> okay. Oh god. Disadvantage again. Oh god. Oh, oh that's not bad. too bad. Oh man. Oh that's not too oh, bad. Oh that's, that's good. Really good. <laughs> Alright. We realign and this time adjusting for the wind you fire it and you see the arc straight towards its mark and lets out a chain score <laughs> as the bolt sinks into its feathers. Uh, you can roll 3d10. 23 Ouch. points of damage. That was, <laughs> that was a mm. chunky hit as well. Oh god, the creature looks pretty wounded at this point. But, uh... It's had over 50 damage done to it, I think. It's like nothing, yeah. Cool. Alright. Uh, I'll just use the rest. Okay. Um, this one is under the illusion Oh, this strange thing. So I'm gonna think it's gonna fly backwards into this guy. And we'll take him fight. We can't see. Uh, yeah, just kind of pecks at this nearest one. Still thinking it's attacking its Pegasus target. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, that one. It's gonna retaliate. <laughs> it's got nothing else it can do. Yeah. They're terribly hitting each other though. <laughs> it's kind of infighting. It's like <laughs> squawks and clucks. <laughs> um, um, okay. Amazing. Oh boy. So this one. Gonna fly backwards, and you hear a kind of clattering of like wood. It goes out of sight though, because it would fly down below, trying to get out of line of sight of Andy. Uh, and as it flies down here, it kind of goes out of sight. And you just hear a load of clattering of wood. Okay, this one um, gets on this ballista. Fires it towards Kishan. <laughs> if it actually did, that would be it's hilarious <laughs> at the same time. It's it's like up Do you know what? Do you know what? Try me. <laughs> yeah, he's the one person where I think it would be hilarious. It's like, haha, this cockatrice is smart enough to shoot you. Yeah. Oh, but it's not smart enough to know you're a monk. <laughs> oh, no. Um, this Pegasus is going to fly oh. after you. Harry. Yeah, It'll I'm probably catch up to you, being that it's got 90 foot, 90 oh, foot of flight. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I was 206, I'm like 110 feet away from the cockatrice in it, so yeah, we'll be able to catch up and get past me. Yep, it overtakes you, and everyone else sees this beautiful white pegasus flying at full speed towards the party. Ah. Uh. Okay, I don't know. Um, not going to be much left of this fight anyway. Uh, the rooster is the only one that's not afraid necessarily. And it's going to swoop after you. Match